All right, Rocky back here with uh, Make Your Adventures. Doing a real quick video. Um, I'll throw some pictures in with this one, but I got through the install with the control panel on my 2021 Daxamantis. Um, and now I'm doing the inverter. So what I kind of wanted to show you was where I'm gonna mount it. It's a little bit of work, but I think it's gonna look slick um, and it's gonna be out of the way. So I'm gonna show you here. So this is your compartment, uh, basically where you would just have your heater tubes. Got a couple of them tucked up out of the way here. And there's a support that actually helps with your kitchen crate, the one right underneath the sink. And that runs all the way over. So it is actually supported back here, so it's very sturdy. So I ended up actually cutting that and my inverter will end up slipping right into this area. Then I'm gonna modify the panel. So I'll have my plugs and everything accessible right here. And down below, I yanked out all of my batteries for the time being. So I can get in here and you'll see in the back, I, did, I drilled three holes out. Now, in this trailer, it comes with the lead acid batteries but I have upgraded and actually they're sitting right here. I have got Renergy's um, smart batteries. They're 100 amp hours lithium. So you don't have to be concerned about the venting. Um, that's something for lead acid. That's why it's all sealed. So now that the lithium's in here, it's not uh, a concern. So that's why I put holes in the back and I got three because I'm gonna feed my power cable, my ground cable off my inverter, and then, so I don't have to take the batteries all the way back out again, I drilled the third hole for when I'm going to mount my um, charge controller. It's also gonna go up here um, on the panel so that it's all accessible, I can see everything and I just, I didn't want to tuck it way far back in here in case I needed to get to it. So that third hole down here in the battery box is actually for running the wires for my solar hookup outside and they'll come through the battery cover here and go right into the bottom of the charge controller that's going to be mounted. So I'm going to go through, get the inverter all installed and do some testing on it see if it can run should run the air conditioning um should run um starlink internet and basically be able to be off grid 100 percent so here we go all right so i've got the inverter mounted and there's some wiring in the back that i wanted to kind of show and i'll see if you can see it here so once this piece is trimmed and out, you're gonna see that there's a, there's a harness behind it and you'll actually need to disconnect that before, before you cut here um, or else you can damage the harness. There's a few screws, I think four total and the whole thing can pull up out of the way. So what I did is I kind of made just like a little bridge back here. I actually used the piece of the panel and then two small pieces of two by four. And what I was able to do, get some light on it, is kind of just make a bridge. And I mounted the wiring harness and basically that little um, breaker section uh, or um, a junction box right there. I mounted that to, to that piece of wood and it's super stable, won't bounce around gives plenty of clearance back here for my cables and fans for good ventilation and you can see it is totally secured just got to slide the batteries in hook it up and give her a test run now it does stick out a little bit here and the reason i did that is um, when i cut this panel I'm actually gonna end up only having two of the heat ducts here. The third one is actually gonna be routed behind and come out 
over by the kids' bed um, beds, and then my charge controller is going to be right here. So that's going to kind of stick out a little bit. So I didn't want this to be way far recessed in. I wanted to make sure that plugs were all accessible. All right, Let's hook it up and give her a test. All right, we are connected, hooked up, inverters on. So cycled the AC on, okay, so the AC unit fan only is on right now. So we are actually pulling, you can see right here, might be hard to see on the screen. It is 6.7 amps. You can see the negative on this side. That means that it's pulling amperage out when it's charging it'll just show uh the negative will be gone because it's a positive number and then also it might be difficult to see but there's actually hours remaining so if we were running the fan 100 percent um looks like we can go 30 30 hours roughly uh with that on at all times so now we're going to kick the AC unit on, actually fire up the AC, see how many amps it's pulling out of there when that cycles on. And here we go. Alright, AC kicked on, takes a second here, and boom, jumps up huge. Um, start up. Looks like it's kicking 40, 45 amps roughly right now, 46, you can see right there. So, I mean, you can't run air conditioning forever, but if you have no connections, no hookups, um, You know, you can kick the AC on for a little bit. Now, the next step for me is um, I, I didn't want to mount solar panels to the roof. So, because if we're boondocking somewhere and we want to be in the shade to stay cool, I didn't, you know, the solar panels would become irrelevant at that point. So, what I ended up doing is getting suitcase panels. And they're uh, also through Renergy, which all the equipment that I got is. And I'm going to have a I'm going to install a plug on the outside where I can do a quick disconnect and then run out to two panels and pull in 400 watts. So it would be curious to see with the AC on and the panels all connected with the charge controller if we'll actually be in a negative or if we'll stay consistent. It would be awesome if I could stay at 100% power with the AC on. Now we also have Starlink, so I'll probably plug that in, see how much it bumps it up. I can't imagine that's going to do too much. But uh, yeah, one more step done. Last one is to get charge controller and wiring hooked up for panels.